Are you satisfied by all the answers by the end of part two? Yeah, I would say fans would be really, really happy with how it ends. We didn't fly into the storm. It flew into us. It chose us. Here we are after the cancellation of Manifest, back for the fourth season. How does that feel? I mean, it feels amazing. It feels like, you know, we got a second chance that we didn't think we would get and we get to finish the story now. Um, but it's like, thanks to the fans. Like, it's, it's crazy to see what hashtagging and what tweeting and what rallying can do to a show. I mean, I've seen it happen to other shows, but to actually have it happen to us is really, really cool. When did it become real for you? Like the moment you were like, oh, we really are coming back. I mean, <laughs> I, I work in Hollywood. It's not real until you're on set shooting it. So that's when it felt real. What is the number one question you're most excited for fans to get the answer to? I mean, the obvious, what happened to the plane, um, but also just what happens to them now? Like what happens when they do figure it out? Um, and we do get to kind of get a, a glimpse of that. So it's really exciting for for us to share that. So we kick off with a two year time jump, which is significant. How has life changed for the Stone family? I mean, it's changed a lot. Um, we left off with Grace dying, so that was huge. It's okay. I know what we need to do now. Obviously that's gonna have, you know, ripple effects into the entire family. But so we pick up with Ben in his grief, but that now leaves Michaela to kind of pick up the pieces of solving the mystery of what happened to the plane on her own because Ben is so far, you know, gone that she she doesn't have her co-pilot, her partner, her brother there to help her figure things out, to go on callings with her. Um, and so she's kind of left to herself. And then at the same time, Jared told Michaela that he thought Zeke was gonna die. And that's the only reason he let Zeke marry Michaela. So there's this big conversation. There's this cloud hanging over their heads of like what's gonna happen with the love triangle. And we also get to see what happened with the conversation um, or conversations around that. So it's starting really messy. Really messy. <laughs> and also Cal is now older. Two years ago, I touched the tail fin and disappeared again and then came back five years older. Yes, he aged five and a half years. There's mass tension in the family because of that. Um, and also the fact that he let Angelina into the home. So now Ben, you know, it feels like Cal is guilty of killing his wife as well. Um, there's tension there. And Michaela and Cal kind of formed this really, they've already formed this, but it, it, it deepens. Um, their relationship deepens because Cal has nowhere else to go now. Um, he can't talk to his dad, he can't talk to his sister. Um, so he kind of leans on the field a little bit more. So viewers have always felt like there was something different about Cal, but now we we know he's pretty much like the key to solving this thing. How long have you known the significance of Cal and his story? I think since day one, I think he's kind of always been that pivotal character um, just because he's the innocent. He's the one who has done no wrong. All he does is draws pictures about the future, but he's really the innocent like heart of the show. Um, and so for that, you get to kind of see him like lead, lead the way um, through that. Which is funny because in season one, I was like, is there like an omen thing going on with this child? Like <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> Good show there's a creepy kid doing drawings <laughs> <laughs> well let's talk about zeke because zeke makes the ultimate sacrifice for cal, cal. Come, on. No. come on stay with me come on don't leave me please please no no how did you react when you read this for the first time honestly i thought it was really cool i thought it was great writing um you know you get to see why Zeke does that and how Zeke does that. And it just comes from such a deep place of empathy. And so the fact that it becomes bigger for Zeke and almost like an addiction for Zeke and 
then he gets to end that addiction with a really good act or gesture or whatever. I thought that was really great writing. How heart-wrenching was that to film, just knowing like, oh, I'm saying bye to this co-star I've worked with for so long. I mean, there's no true goodbyes in Manifest. I mean, and also Zeke has died so many times that at this point I feel like good written. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it was horrible. The way that we shot it, the Kayla doesn't even have a chance to say a proper goodbye. And so that was the hard part, I think, um, just like being in the scene with him is that she she gets there a little bit too late. But Michaela <laughs> revealed she had feelings for Jared at the start of the season. Would you support? Yeah, Boy there. That was just a pivot right into the other. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> just like, eh, it's a little soon, but would you, uh, I don't know, do you think there's like a path for them someday? It's, uh, it's a drama, it's manifest, and, and the feelings aren't gone. Like, they have been there since day one. Jared and Michaela love each other a ton, and it's been super duper messy, but there's just so much love there that you can't just walk away from each other. Are you personally Team Jared or Team Z? <laughs> Everyone asks me this. I am Team both for different reasons. I think Zeke is, you know, Michaela's rock and they have this supernatural connection that she does not have with Jared because he hasn't gone through what they've gone through. But Jared is loyal and he's been there and they have a history that her and Zeke don't. So it's just, it's for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've never wanted to see someone go down harder than Angelina. She is so enjoying right. How far can she go? Like you, you already know the secrets of part two. Like she, she goes pretty far. She goes pretty, pretty far. Yeah. She takes things dark for sure. Which character do you find more aggravating Egan or Angelina? I, <laughs> I kind of love Egan. I think he's such a menace, but like such a harmless menace. He really is just, he only thinks about himself, whereas Angelina is thinking about herself, but kind of in a bigger picture, whereas Egan's mostly just trying to like get something in the moment. So he's a little bit more harmless in that way. Who do you ship Sanvi with? Uh, probably Drea. <laughs> like, Ooh! Like off screen, uh, they're two of my closest friends here. So it's just like, and, and they have such a beautiful friendship. Um, I mean, we'll see what happens, but in, in my perfect world, they would end together. I love that. What about Ben? You know, Ben deserves love. He absolutely deserves love. And and maybe he gets it. Who knows? But uh, his wife just died, so I think we'll give him a second. Now, did you direct two episodes in part two? They gave me one, and it was kind of my uh, first time directing, so it was a huge learning curve, but I had so much fun doing it. And, um, you know, we're in season four slash five, whatever you want to call it, and the whole crew is just so seamless at this point that I thought it would be so much harder, but everyone really just wants to make Manifest the best show possible. And so it was such an awesome experience doing it on this show because I felt so supported and stuff. But um, yeah, we just had like a group of creatives really just wanting the best for the episode for the show. So it was a blast. Did the move to Netflix, do you feel like changed anything about the show? Like. Are you able to go darker, edgy, or anything like that? Yeah, I think we did a little bit, to be honest. Um, I think there might be one or two more cuss words in there. Um, <laughs> and I think storyline-wise, it just feels a bit more relaxed with what we're able to do. Um, so it's been fun. That's awesome. So the A28ers, they realize that the death day is not just for them, but for everyone. A28 wasn't an accident. We're supposed to save the passengers together. Our death date is in 18 months. We have to follow every lead. What can you tease about what happens next and their plan? Jeez, um, what happens next? I mean, it's just a countdown to that death date. They're, they're not sure, to be honest. They're trying to figure it out um, along with the rest of them. And, and, you know, they're finding new creative ways to get there. Um, and the stakes just keep getting higher and higher. And so I don't think they have a plan in mind so much more just like rolling with the punches and the punches get harder and harder. Are you satisfied by all the answers by the end of part two? Yeah, I would say fans would be really, really happy with how it ends just because it's so, it's such a hard show to wrap up. The way our showrunner did it was really beautiful for lack of a better word. It's really the end, correct? I think it really is the end. I mean, who knows? In this day and age, there could be a spin-off, there could be a side story. We could go dive back into something else. But as of right now, I, I think this is where we are leaving it. What is your message to fans who have been long awaiting this next chapter, the season four? One, 
thank you for helping us get here because we really wouldn't be without them. Um, and uh, two, I just I hope that they enjoy it as much as we had. Like we had so much fun filming it that I hope they enjoy it to the same degree. Because there are some people that have been with us since day one. Like even some of the background that we had on our show have been there since day one, and so it really just feels like a collective, including the fans. So I'm just excited for them to see it.